St. Petersburg, Florida, an American city with one of the most beautiful downtown waterfronts anywhere in the world. A waterfront that has seen a lot of history in sailing and a lot of history in power. The identification of the city came about with the arrival of Major League Baseball, and now it gets identified again with a national championship run for the GMC Pro Grade Offshore Championships. Hello, everyone. I'm Dick Crippen. Welcome to St. Petersburg, Florida. Joining me today again, Martin Sanborn. Martin, we look out here as the offshore boats get ready to take to the water, and it's just great to be back. Oh, we, we love coming here. I love racing in this city myself. It's got one of the most beautiful skylines you can imagine. Everything is so nice. The people are so great. Everything is so up close and personal. And these boats are going to get as close as we get in offshore powerboat racing to right where you can sit and watch it. It doesn't get any better than this. Well, the water conditions are always interesting in St. Petersburg because it is Tampa Bay, and that means that it's wide enough to get rough, but it also can get very smooth at times. Well, you look out there today for today's race, and there's a lot of guys that are concerned that their boats don't run as good in smooth water, and that's what we've got today. But, you know, as in anywhere else we race, if you don't like it this morning, wait till this afternoon. It could very well change, and that's a very real possibility this afternoon. They have moved the course a little bit. Let's take a look at what these guys will be running. Well, not only have they moved the course, Dick, they've also changed the direction of rotation. It's a counterclockwise course, but we've moved it right inside, a little bit past the pier. Turn one and two are right in front of the spectators. Turn three is right out in front of the pier. Turn four and five takes you out to sea. Turn six runs you right back into downtown St. Pete, and that's where the start's going to be. It's going to be interesting to watch, and as we look at the boats in the milling area, they're about to go out. The team to watch is the number three off of the pole position. That is Team Winnebago. Team Winnebago Red Devil Energy Drink. They have been leading it all season. These guys have been tough all year long. They've come into this race knowing that if they finish well on this, they're absolutely going to clinch themselves a national championship. They couldn't be happier, but the team they've really got to watch over their shoulder for is this boat, Team Typhoon with Glenn Murray and Randy Schluss. Very tough competitors right on their heels. One little hiccup, these guys could end up with the national championship. And, of course, factory racing is very equal racing. They really depend on the driver and the throttleman to know what they're doing and what the boat can do. Factory class racing is single, the factory ones anyway, are single V-bottom boats up to 30 feet in length, all powered by the Mercury 500 HP or the Mercury 525, depending on the weight handicaps. They're also allowed to run the GM Vortec HP3. Now we look at the yellow flag on the pace boat, and there's the green, and we are off and running. And the start of the factory ones, and right off the bat, the yellow boat, sort of in the center of your screen to the right, is going out into the lead. And that's Team Winnebago, Red Devil Energy Drink, as they head down to turn number one. Another tough boat on the outside we saw coming was Velocity VR1. They hold the kilo record, but here is your leader. Boy, they are just marching away from the fleet. That is Mark Kowalski and Gino Marone, F-110, Red Devil, High Energy Drink, Winnebago Racing, doing a phenomenal job as they make their way clean water through turn one. And turn one is almost handled like a big horseshoe for this turn, and it's not really turn one and turn two. It's all one together, and they're going to try to handle it like a big semicircle and cut across the apex. There you see a great shot looking into the cockpit of the lead boat. Very confident, and rightfully so, Gino Marone and Mark Kowalski. But here's your second place boat, the current kilo record holder, Bob Spitalski and Steve Kildall in Team Velocity VR1. These guys hold the kilo record in Factory One. Very tough boat. And here's Team Levy Craft. This is the F-111. That's Brian Jones and Kevin Cooper. Now the team to watch, Team Typhoon, usually in a black boat. I'm thinking uh, I wish we had the black boat. As you know, the last race, uh, we did real well in that. Out of eight laps, took us six to get out front. Uh, we finally did. We finally dialed that boat in like we talked about all year. Uh, unfortunately, we got a lot of damage in the bottom. So now we're back to uh, the white boat. That's the explanation as to what they're doing, but that'll play sometimes on the head of a racer. Absolutely. Everybody's kind of looking back on this is a really fast boat, but they also had to go back to the 500 instead of the 525. As we go to our outlaw performance start, these boats are all based on speed. This is bracket racing on the water, if you will. It's the run what you run class. You bring a boat down here. If it has all the safety equipment, they're going to put you in a class based on how fast you go. And here's your current leader overall, P414. They are doing a good job handling this course, and as we say, these drivers are getting a lot of experience. Now we move up to the Factory One again, and you can see the Team Winnebago Red Double Energy Drink team of Gino Marone and Mark Kowalski having no problem at all. They are leading the race at this point. They've got a long way to go. We'll see if they can hold on to it when we return to the beautiful shores of St. Pete, Florida in just a moment. Welcome back to St. Petersburg, Florida, as you look at the flotilla that's assembled to watch the 2003 GMC Pro Grade Series, the APBA Offshore National Championships. Right now, the dominant force in the Factory One boats, the F-110, 
Team Winnebago, Red Devil Energy drink, but we've got a battle going on elsewhere in the field. Boy, the battle we've got going on for third and fourth is spectacular. Team Levycraft with a substitute throttleman in there after the accident in Fort Lauderdale with Typhoon right on the inside trying to inch their way up. Typhoon's got the better line. Those guys absolutely know how to run that boat. That boat is the dialed in one, the white boat. Everybody was a little concerned. They're not in the hunt for first place. Oh, they have now moved into third place. And there you look right down into the cockpit. You can see them fighting the wakes as they go back and forth across the top of them. They have their eyes on one boat, and that's the yellow boat coming right at you. That is the Team Winnebago Red Devil Energy Drink, F-110. They are leading the pack. They are dominating the field. You know, they had a very disappointing finish in Fort Lauderdale. Really concerned that they missed the propeller setup on the boat, but they're making up for it this day. Yeah, we'll uh, go back to our old setup. We tried something different today and it didn't work out. We thought, you know, with the rough water this would work and it didn't work, so we'll go back to what we used to. Well, that's always the decision that you have to make on these courses. And boy, once you've made them and once you're into the racing mode, there is no going back. The F-156 coming through, this is Team Velocity. They're holding very steady out there. Bob Spitalski and Steve Kidall. Now you can see Typhoon is trying to close in on them. Boy, they got a good one on that turn too, and that's turn one and two. Boy, yeah, turn one and two is one big sweeper. You see how well they did it, but these guys running uncontested right now. Team Winnebago, Red Devil Energy Drink, Mark Kowalski and Gino Marone currently running in first place. Let's take a moment out here for the GMC Pro Grade Minute. GMC is on site at every APBA offshore event where fans and boating enthusiasts have an opportunity to see firsthand the newest technology available. Whether folks own a powerboat or own a sail sailboat, they own a truck. And that's how they either get to the water where their boat is, or the, whether it's in dry storage or dock, or it's how they, more importantly, tow their boat. We have an option known as Quadrasteer. It is available on both our Sierra pickup truck line as well as our Yukon XL line, which is the, uh, our full-size utility. And to think that someone who's never gone through trying to back a boat trailer down a ramp can now, uh, with this technology, back a boat with the greatest of ease and now also maneuver in and out of tight areas. It's just an amazing, amazing technology that is exclusive to uh, GMC. Back to the waters off downtown St. Petersburg, Florida, entering now into turn number one and making that wide sweep around a turn number two, the F-110 leading in the factory one boats. Now, once they leave there, they hit sort of a chicane. That means it's the only place in the course that they're gonna make a right-hand turn. Meanwhile, look at the battle going on right behind them. The F-156 team velocity VR1 being challenged by Typhoon trying to get on that inside line. Boy, they're not able to do it. Team Velocity VR1 slamming the door on Randy Schluss and Glenn Murray. Oh, absolutely slammed the door on them. Forced them to go tighter to the buoy. Lost a little bit of their speed right there. Boy, Randy was not happy about that at all. Well, he's going to try to hold on to it and see whether he can make that work or not. Flash wave. Glenn Wilson and Jim Shearer coming up in there. There's, you see, the Lady Crab boat. That is now riding in fourth place as they make that big sweeping turn. There you see Flash Wave, the F-148, that's Glenn Wilson and Jim Shearer. They are holding on to fifth place, trying to move up. Look at the unbelievable ride attitude these guys have in this boat, running it very flat. I know that they're running it wide open, not going to let down at all. Here's your battle for second and third right now. Velocity VR1 has opened up a little bit of a gap after that move at turn one over the Team Typhoon. And you can see that uh, the other team has moved to the outside. That's Team Typhoon. Typhoon, and they are trying to close it in the what, supposedly smoother water on the outside, but I don't think they're getting it. They are closing down that gap just a little bit, though, so maybe they will be able to make it. There you see that field summary. That's after five laps here in St. Petersburg, Florida, where we'll return to more racing after we take this brief timeout. St. Petersburg, Florida, beautiful downtown skyline, and it looks right out on Tampa Bay, where today the APBA Offshore National Championships are being decided, all part of the 2003 GMC Pro Grade Offshore Series. And there's your leader in the F-110. They are dominating in Factory One at the moment. Gino Marone and Mark Kowalski, they are really batting, but look at the battle now for second place. F-156 Team Velocity is the white boat in the lead. Team Typhoon right behind them and trying to close that gap. 
Here we have F-110 going in there, diving in hard. These guys are pushing real hard as uh, Gino Marone looks over his shoulder to see where his competition is going into turn one. The big sweeper right in front of the pit area here, as close as you can get to downtown as they head out towards the chicane. Now, you know, when you've got a battle for second place like we're looking at right here, that forces the F-156 to open those throttles a little bit more, which also puts pressure on the front runner. He can't let off at all because he knows that in order to hold on to second place, they're going to have to really try hard. Team Typhoon is pushing them in second place. He's trying to get up there, take it out of third, and go up to second. Team Levy Craft just hanging right in there. He says, hey, let them do battle at this point. Maybe somebody will drop out and we'll sneak up in position. They right now are holding on to fourth place. You know what really needs to happen up in that battle for second and third? You know, Glenn Murray and Randy Schluss, they are hoping for a complete switch around. They need to be in first and put a boat between them and Red Devil Energy Drink as we watch Team F-148 flash wave come through in fifth place. That's Glenn Wilson and Jim Shear. They are just holding their course right at the moment. Here's Screaming Eagle. Now, this is pretty neat. Ryan Beckley out of Braden in Florida and Alan Campbell on the throttles out of Longboat Key. This is kind of a new matchup after that little accident that they had in Sarasota, Florida. Ryan came in and took over the throttles for him, so we'll see how they do as a team. Right now, they are sitting back in sixth place. You're out of turn five. They're on the back straightaway now. Your leaders. Now we go to second place, F-156. Team Velocity VR1 with Bob Spitelsky and Steve Kildall. And there you go, right behind them. And the challenge is being mounted by Glenn Murray and Randy Schluss, both New Jersey guys. And they're saying, this is pretty smooth water for us up in Jersey. They get it pretty rough. You know, Dick, you take a look at Team Levycraft. Look at where their trim tabs are. They got their tabs down just a little bit compared what we saw on Team Typhoon. There you see the Flash Wave boat, and we're going to go on board Team Flash Wave. Oh, the turn right. All right, thank you. Well, they're on the final lap now. If they're going to make a move, they've got to make it on this turn and try to get change of position. There they are. They're making their move. They're tight on the inside. Oh, they got it side there. They hooked it. They hooked it. The throttleman's in the water. Unbelievable. Jim Shearer in the water back there, just missing the other boat on the outside. Let's take a look at this again. Inside. There he goes. Oh, my gosh. It's like it, like it and squeezing a bar of soap, Dick. You have no idea how quickly that happens. One minute you feel like you're in control. The next minute you're in the water wondering what happened. Meanwhile, up in the front of the pack, as they have been since the green flag, there's the checkered for the F-110. Gino Marone and Mark Kowalski aboard the Team Winnebago Red Devil Energy Drink Boat. They have worked hard to get that position. There you see Velocity finishing second, Typhoon in third, Team Levycraft in fourth, and so on down the line. Congratulations to the winner. Let's go down to the pits. We just, uh, after the last race, we changed our setup. We didn't win. Everybody was talking. We ain't so fast, but we showed them. Four wins this season and national championship. After Fort Lauderdale, we would normally came in here and relaxed, but all the trash talk, and I was like, man, if we lap people, I don't even care at this point. You know, we want to be sports with you, but that's it. Okay, so, so there was none of this thinking of let's save the equipment. We got to. He did. There was. There was some arguing, and at the third lap, he was losing. So, no, there was no saving the equipment. <laughs> Mercury's been behind us all year. Sponsors been behind us and everything else. And Typhoon, any questions, boys? We gave it a shot. We dusted it off, like I told you before. They got a great jump on us at the start. Uh, Actually, we had a better race uh, with the Velocity team today because uh, we seem to be a lot closer. They just walked away. They had it dialed, and we couldn't touch them. Now, we went into turn five neck and neck with the Levy Craft boat. We were on the inside hitting it good and hard. And you know, I've always said, anybody comes out of the boat, it's the throttleman's fault. And I am the throttleman, and I am at fault. And I'm okay. Everything's fine. Well, we look at the performance boats. They were out here performing while the other boats were running also. And in the P1 boats, we have the number P-127. That was the American Dream Boat, Bill Bevan of Prospect, Kentucky, and Michael Jordan on the throttle out of Cincinnati, Ohio. They better the White Knuckles racing team and Dirty Duck to take first place. Here we have in the P-2 class, P-271 Lucas Oil, which we'll see running as a Super V here shortly. That's Thomas Miller and Nigel Hook. And off in the P-3 now, we have the number P-371, which is Cancun Cantina, Jason Moffat and John Cornsby. They are winners over traffic fighting. And in Outlaw Performance 4, P414 Cast-Off Racing. Dave Metters owns this cigarette with Dave Metters driving and Scott Povajewski from Michigan on the throttles. And in P5, we've got the Vixen boat taking the checkered flag. Kenneth Caston out of Sanibel, Florida is the driver of the boat. David Howard out of Fort Myers is on the throttle. And in the One Design class, Max Q Racing, number six, with Tim Hines and Rick Young take the checkered flag at the national championships. 
great racing from St. Petersburg, Florida, and we've got more of it coming up. The boats are already on the water. Stay with us as we get ready for Super V Racing. Well, we're back in St. Petersburg, Florida on a gorgeous day for powerboat racing, getting ready for the Super Vs and the 2003 GMC Pro Grade Series, the APBA National Offshore Championships. Let's take a look at the Super V lineup. Here's the lineup right now. Mikasuki Indian Gaming has the best line on the race course. They've got the inside on the outside, Knight Osley Motorsports. They would have arguably the worst line since they didn't start at the last race. Now, here's the points breakdown for Team Donzi that they've got through the course of the year, but this doesn't take into account one important thing. They get to throw out their lowest national point score and replace it with a divisional race, so it's going to make it very tight. That puts this boat right on their heels, Team Spider-Man, with a total of 509 points before they throw out their lowest race. And then, of course, Ettore Squeegees, and these guys have amassed a total of 508 points before they throw out their lowest. So we have a tremendous battle between these top three points to determine the national championship here in St. Petersburg. And once again, we're talking parity in these Super V boats. These are the twin-engine canopy V-bottoms, up to 40 feet in length, total horse power of a little over 1,050 horsepower. They're allowed to run either the Mercury Racing 525 EFI or the GM Vortec HP380100, and all these boats have to weigh 8,000 pounds. The GMC Pace Boat is bringing them down under a yellow flag. There it goes, green, and we are off and running in the Super Bs. And right off the bat, it looks like the Utz Quality Foods Castaway Boat is breaking to a lead on the inside. He's not the total inside. He's about lane two. But right now, Mitch Miller is really powering that boat forward. Well, they're going to go into turn one as hot as they can right now. You can see where they've got the trim indicator set. They are in the lead. Right on the inside of them is Mikasuki Indian Gaming. On the outside of them, you have the... Ettore Squeegee's boat. Oh, they're a little sideways. Oh, they spun the boat out. Spun the boat out and stuck it in backwards. Utz Castaway was in the lead, spun out on turn one. Let's take a look at that replay. Here we are on board. You can see where they have the trim settings. Look like they're a little in. Ho, oh, stuck the nose in, spun the boat around. At least they landed the boat right side up. And it looks like they may try to get it going again. Mitch Miller and Matt Rice aboard that boat, and they were in the lead off the start. There's the big Super V known as Spider-Man, Lance Hendrickson and Todd Welling. This is a team that has come on stronger and stronger all year long. And right behind them in that battle for the lead in points is Ettore Squeegee. Now running at the same time as the Super Vs are the Factory 2 boats. And there's some tremendous battles going on here. Here's the lineup on the inside. Team Pantera, they have start the inside this time. And Audacity Racing is on the outside. Here are the points battles as we go in to the national championships battle. In the lead, Team Snap on Talking Tools with 570 points. In second place, AR Racing, the other Donzi, with a total of 548 points. And in, in third place, Harwich Concrete Block. These guys also in a battle. The lone non-Donzi up in the fleet right here. These guys running tough with a total of 547 points. And then in fourth place, Let's Play Racing with Patrick Dunn and Jeff Grishano. These guys have a total of 535 points going into the national championship. So this is anybody's battle depending on how everything shakes out. Now, Factory 2, these are open cockpit twin-engine V-bottom boats up to 39 feet in length. They're all running either the Mercury 500 EFI, the Mercury 525 EFI, or they're also allowed to run the GM Vortec HP3 8100. And here goes the start of the Factory 2s. Now, look what's happened. They are so close to the start of the Super Vs, they don't even have the yellow flag out for the Utz Castaway boat that spun out earlier. So they're going wide, but the advantage goes to the boat on the inside in lane number one. That's the Let's Play Racing Cirrus team. They're doing doing a good job of holding a good line. Patrick Dunn and Jeff Grishano, they have got the feel good coming out of that turn. Right behind them, Harwich Concrete Block. These guys running in second place. They were hoping for a little bit smoother water today as we watch Team O-Town AR Racing. That's Infoglyph F221. Now let's go to Super V Light Action. This is a 14 lap race. Way too crazy. We'll have the advantage on the inside. Next to them is High Noon Racing. Let's see how they take the start. Here are the points. You know, of course, a boat that's been tough to beat, in fact, impossible to beat all year long, is Extreme Vortec. These guys have been flawless all year long, running undefeated, a total of 630 points. They have all but secured the national championship. In second place, High Noon Racing, with a substitute throttleman in the boat today. Dennis Hansen is throttling for Richie Ligori today. They are in the boat High Noon Racing in second place. Now, the Super V Light are the canopy single-engine boats. These boats are up to 33 feet in length. They all have to weigh 5,000 pounds. 
All of the boats in this class are allowed to run the 525 Mercury, but they all happen to be running the HP3 8100 Series Vortex. As we look at Utz Castaway right here, they've got the yellow flag out right now, letting all the boats coming in at turn one. We've got incidents on the race course. As we watch the Vortex Extreme Boat go through turn one, now these guys are right out in the race course, so everybody's got to go way wide to get around the incident with Utz Castaway. Broken down now, apparently not able to get the boat underway as everybody makes their way around turn one towards turn two, right in front of the pier, across the Utz Castaway boat who has drifted onto the race course. There's Vortec Extreme, and that boat is doing a great job. They are leading in the field right now. Here's your Super V leader. This is Spider-Man coming around that turn. They are completing their first lap. They are out of the accident scene now and going strong. We're going to be back with more great racing from St. Petersburg, Florida in a moment. St. Petersburg, Florida, the 2003 GMC Pro Grade Series, the APBA Offshore National Championships. Dick Griffin along with Martin Sanborn. We've had an accident on the course, a yellow flag out. Spider-Man is leading right now as they are completing lap number one. You can see they have gone wide to the outside to avoid that scene. But look what's happened on the inside. Team Ettore Squeegee's moving hard onto the inside right there. They are racing through a yellow. They're okay. They're onto the outside of it. Oh, Team Donzi has spun out and hit the pace boat. They went a little bit too close to the inside, spun the boat out and hit the pace boat. They put somebody in the water, the flagman. You can see the flag waving in the water. The flagman was on the deck of the pace boat. Yellow flag still intact as he holds it in the water there and swims back over to the GMC pace boat. Here's from inside Utz Castaways. Here you see Team Donzi spins the boat out, absolutely hits the bow of the GMC pace boat, puts a huge hole in it, puts Tito's in the water with the yellow flag. Unbelievable. Well, we're glad everybody's all right on that, and we assume everybody also is all right on the Team Donzi. Well, you can see he was a little bit shaken up there trying to comprehend what happened there, but apparently he's okay. He's back onto the boat. Team Donzi got back into the race. They missed that turn, though. They completely missed turn two. I can't believe they got back in the race after hitting the pace boat. Let's talk about a little bit of strategy with the Team Spider-Man. We're going to give it our best shot. we got an awesome team, awesome boat. Skater puts on such a great boat that uh, we're just going to go out and see if, the, see if we can put it out front. Well, Spider-Man certainly is out front now, and they've got command of the Super V class back in second place. Etta Ray Squeegee's holding right in there. If the lead boat hiccups, this boat's going to move up in there super, super fast. There you see the accident scene. It looks like everybody is okay. The yellow flag is back up on the pace boat. Still got that hole in the bow. Let's take a time out here to join the offshore community. In offshore racing, the unexpected can happen in the blink of an eye and rapid response of the rescue team is critical to the racer's safety. Working with the local rescue team is a vital part of being able to put on an offshore race. We've got four uh, jump divers in helicopters, but it takes many more rescue divers than that to be able to provide the adequate safety that we need for these racers. So we're liable to have anywhere from 10 to 20 rescue divers that will train with us over the weekend so we can work together and provide a, a better rescue service to the racers. All medical personnel basically treat patients the same way, ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. But one of, the, one of the hard things to do in water rescue is maintain sea spine immobilization. Uh, we've got a system where basically we lock our fingers into their PFD, we hold their helmet with our other three fingers, we rest them and use our, actually use our body as a backboard until we can get a backboard from a boat. And uh, then we just strap them into the regular backboard and move them into the medical boat. Back to the action on the race course. Team Spider-Man in the lead, and they are uncontested at this point. Now, Etta Ray Squeegees is still very much in the battle, but they are holding about the same margin between first and second place as they continue on the course. I think Spider-Man thought they were going to march away a little bit. Etta Ray Squeegees right on their tail, only about three or four boat lengths back, holding a great line through the racing. But here's a battle that we didn't expect to see. This brand new boat, Adrenaline Racing, with Ken Bowen and Scott Conrad running in third place here at the National Championships. And here we look at Mikasuki Indian Gaming with Brett Fershman and Todd Eason. This boat kind of got on the outside of the incident. They were on the outside of Team Donzi. They're currently running in fourth place. Back in fifth place, it's the Pier 57 boat. That's Bill McComb out of Sarasota, Florida, just down the road, and Rick Termel out of Pompano Beach, Florida. But your leader and uncontested as he goes between four and five on the race course right now, he's got open water. It is the Spider-Man team. 
Now back into Factory 2 Racing. These guys have led from start so far. They are running absolutely flawlessly. This is Team Sirius Radio. Let's play racing with Jeff Cresciano and Patrick Dunn in their 38-foot formula, running a flawless race today in this calm water. Look at the battle for second and third. Team Audacity Racing right on the outside of them. Harwich Concrete Block forced to go a little bit wide, hopping through the turns a little bit there, pushing that boat a little harder than I think they want to through those turns, Dick. That's Luke Dickey and Chris Wickstrom. A.R. Donzi in second place. Let's talk to that team about the setup they had going in. Well, hopefully we hit the setup right again, and, and most of all, if uh, if we don't break, uh, we're going to win. That's all there is to it. Well, so far, they're looking pretty good. They're up in second place. Now let's see if they can get the power to take over first place. Meanwhile, back and forth, Pantera racing. Easy to see with those eyes staring back. Eric Treadwell, boy, you talk about experience. He's got it. Eric was pretty happy with how the boat was running. And here we have the husband and wife team of Brian and Wilma Ross and Team Snap on Talking Tools. They're going into this race as the points leaders in the national championship, but they're back a little bit to this boat, the leader, Patrick Dunn and Jeff Fershano in Let's Play Racing. They've had command of this race since the beginning. In the Super Super V Light, another man that's had command is Steve Mikolos, and he's partnered with Gary DeSouci. He's out of Newport Ritchie, Florida, the Extreme Vortec, as the Super V Light's in their command right at the moment. Can they hold on? We'll find out shortly, but look how he's cutting through the water. Great shots showing the power and the control of that boat. Well, you get a great view of the bottom of that boat. See how the steps work, and it's got a bench on the side of it. Very technical boat as they carve their way through that turn. Here we look at the second place boat, High Noon Racing. These guys, this has got to be a very frustrating deal for them. This is a view they've seen all year long. The transom of that extreme boat running very well. Here comes Ben Hendrick and Eric Walbert in their boat. This is only the second boat, second race out for this brand new boat. Well, they're holding on to third place and doing a good job. In fourth place, it's way too crazy, which is a great name, incidentally, for a race boat. Graham Papura and Scott Utah on the throttles. Georgia and North Carolina respectively, and they're just having a good ride in that boat, holding on to fourth place. I got a chance to talk to Steve Nichols before the race about racing in St. Pete. We've never won in St. Pete. Um, if we don't, we play our cards right, we win the national championship, so one part of us wants us to be conservative, the other part really, really wants to win in our hometown. Well, they're on their way to doing that. Their hometown, of course, is Newport Ritchie, Florida, which is just a matter of miles from where they're racing right now, a little bit north of Tampa Bay. As far as the leader in the Super Vs, it is the Spider-Man boat. They have been unchallenged. There you see the lineup after three laps of racing, and we will be back to see if they can complete it for the checkered flag in St. Petersburg, Florida, in a moment. There you see a great shot of downtown St. Petersburg where the 2003 GMC Pro Grade Series APBA Offshore National Championships are happening. Of course, those Vortec engine displays out there. And on the course, everybody's looking at Spider-Man. This is the boat that's leading lap number four. They are seemingly having a flawless run. Yeah, that boat runs so well, a big four-step boat. Here comes the second place boat, Ettore Squeegees. This 39-foot fountain with James Richardson and Dennis Agalos. This boat is running very well right now. They're running in second place right on the tail of Team Spider-Man. But here's the boat that's hard to believe how well they're running. Only the second time out for this boat, Ken Bowen and Scott Conrad in Adrenaline Racing. Boy, they are really powering on. That boat looks fast as you look out there. But here's another Super V, the Mikasu. Indian Gaming. This boat has been extremely competitive all year long. You know, you wonder at this point in the race if people are holding back just a little bit to find positioning and water conditions. Bill McComb and Rick Termel in the Pier 57 boat right behind them. There you can see the distance between Mikasuki Indian Gaming and the Pier 57. Oh, Mikasuki Indian Gaming's pulling off to the inside, Dick. They've got some kind of a problem. I know that they've had a couple issues with propellers throwing propeller blades. I wonder if that's what happened today. Well, we'll find out shortly, I'm sure, when we go back down to the pit area, but they are definitely out of it and there you get a close-up view looking into the cockpit of the pier 57 boat and todd is getting out of the boat now and he's going to take a look he's kind of hurrying he's going to check the back end of that boat he's looking down there to see if his props are still in good condition or maybe one of the drives let's take a moment out for the gmc vortec engines wake zone not a lot of people know that gm provides a significant number of uh, marine engines to the marine industry every year and that provides us an inherent advantage uh, in testing we design our engines for the marine specifications, which are inherently much harsher, much tougher environment for an engine to survive. And we take those same engines and put them in our trucks, our full lineup of trucks, vans, and SUVs. And so they're really designed to last longer and be more durable because of this association with the marine market. 
bottom line is the components, we're using the stock production components with a little bit of rubbing on them to produce the kind of horsepower levels that you're seeing out here in the boats. And that's all the way up to 550 horsepower out of the same engine that you see in this truck. So you can see the reliability tie-in. We stress it to the extreme. We bring it back into a production environment. We make it very durable, very reliable. The end product customer gets the benefit of that. Back on the course, you can see Let's Play Racing Cirrus. They are dominating in the Factory 2s right now. They are in the lead. That is not where the battle is. It's right behind them. Look at this battle right here. Team Audacity on the inside. They take a great line on the inside. Hartwich Concrete Block going way wide. That's costing them a ton of distance as Audacity Racing now is going to easily pick up a lot of distance right now. Closing that gap on the first place boat, but really open it up between second and third. There you see A.R. Donzi, they're in second place. Let's go on board that boat. These guys sit down in that cockpit and it kind of looks like they're just out for a Sunday afternoon drive. It kind of belies what's happening as far as their throttle hands and their, what's on the steering wheel. Look at this. F-271, that is Pantera Racing has pulled off. They were in fourth place. That is going to allow the Team Snap on Talking Tools boat to move into fourth place. This boat right here now moves up into fourth place. That's Brian and Wilma Ross. They're having a great run. Uh, looking back at the season for the races that we did, the national and divisional races and then our other competitors, it's going to be real close. It's exciting for APBA to have Factory 2 this close at the end of the season. Well, I'll tell you, they had everything they wanted in Factory 2 this year, and this husband and wife team was a real surprise in about the second and third race. They started coming on hard. There you're taking a look at Let's Play Racing. They are leading at this point. Patrick Dunn is having a good time out there in the Super V races. We now take a look at the Spider-Man as he comes down into that one and two turn. And that's that big sweeping turn where really they don't make two turns. They just make one big sweep. Right on his tail, Team Ettore Squeegee. These guys picking a little bit tighter line going through the race course, hoping to make up some distance. But look at the battle we have right here between Pier 57 and Team Donzi. Now, Team Donzi is a lap down after that incident where they missed the first turn after hitting the pace boat. But they're running real hard trying to get themselves back up onto that lead lap. Pier 57 carving a great line on the inside. They are absolutely not going to give up any quarter to Team Donzi. Right now, Pier 57 is holding them off. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to take that challenge and make anything out of it. Pier 57 had the advantage on the inside. Team Donzi now in the chicane. This will be a right-hand turn as they set up for it right there. They have the advantage of being on the inside for that turn, but no sooner do they get through it than they go back to the outside again. There's your field summary in the Super Vs. We will be back for more racing action from St. Petersburg, Florida, right after this brief timeout. There you're looking down at beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida on the waterfront, the 2003 GMC Pro Grade Series, and you can see the GMC compound. They have really pulled out the stops. And talk about pulling out high noon racing. That's a little bit of a disappointment. Well, we haven't seen them break all year long. Such reliable equipment. And here is your leader. These guys run flawlessly all year long. That's why they got the number one on their boat, Extreme Vortec. Gary DeSusis and Steve Miklos looks like they're on their way to capturing that win here in their home waters. There you can see the Super V Light Hedrick Motorsports, Eric Wahlberg and Ben Hedrick. They are a Florida-based team, number 47, trying to catch that leader, Extreme Vortec. They've got a ways to go. Another Super V Light, way too crazy out of Raleigh, North Carolina and Doraville, Georgia. That boat is holding on to third place. Now here's a hometown boat literally out of Tampa, Florida, Gene Stevens and his daughter, Dina Richardson, combining. Back to our leader in Super V, Team Spider-Man with Lance Hendrickson and Todd Welling. This boat runs so well, it has been running so well all year long. These guys have had a tremendous battle from the boat right on their tail, and that's Ed Ray Squeegees. Those guys get a chance to talk a little bit about the battle they had in Fort Lauderdale. That was a lot of fun uh, dicing with, uh, with, with Lance and uh, Todd there, you know, inside, outside, getting them on the turns, and uh, yeah, it was very exciting and good race. Well, that's what it's all about in offshore racing, and you can see they enjoy the battles and the competition. As we look back now at adrenaline racing, still a bit of a surprise, riding in third place, a brand new boat, one race ago. And there you can see Doug Valentine and Lee Murray as they battle, trying to bring that big 193 Donzi up into the field so they will unlap themselves down a lap because they missed a turn. Pier 57 going out of it, a disappointment for a guy just down the road from Tampa Bay in Sarasota, Florida, Bill McComb.
Team Spider-Man still out in the lead. They got a little bit of a battle on their tail, but if they run right, they have a shot at a national championship with Team Donzi being back in the pack. Well, as we look at that battle for second place, it still goes on. Harwich Concrete, the yellow and red boat on the outside of the AR Donzi. And still, these guys look very relaxed as they check around them to see where the competition is. They know now they have pulled out just a little bit as they hit the turn. And Harwich Concrete bounces through the wake and goes to the inside. Boy, he got a little bit sideways on that, not able to hold the line he wants. He's pushing as hard as he can, made up a lot of distance on AR Donzi on that last lap. Well, they say to relax on your golf swing, and look at Phil Semmel and Joe Scrocky. They are riding now in second place, and they look very relaxed, but they are really battling the water. You know, one of the things that allows these guys to relax in the boat is the new hull technology that allows these big boats to run so smooth in the rough water. Today we're going to talk about step bottom boats. You hear a lot of this, especially in the V-bottom world, traditional V-bottoms or conventional V-bottoms, and step bottom boats. Today we're going to talk about steps and what they do, kind of eliminate some of the mystique and let you know how they really work on the bottom of the boat and what the advantage really is. All conventional V-bottoms as well as step-bottom boats have strakes. These are the strakes. They run in line with the length of the boat. This is a step. A step operates just like a strake, but it runs longitudinally along the boat. Those two little vents behind the aft step those actually allow a little bit more release of surface tension on the bottom of the boat by letting a little bit more air get under the boat, which gives the boat a natural angle of attack of two or three degrees, so the boat actually runs with the thrust angle and the drives pointing straight ahead, rather than having to trim the drives up in order to create bow lift and get the boat to carry. Here's your leader as we go back out onto the course, down that front stretch here in St. Petersburg, Florida, Spider-Man racing, a flawless race from start to finish so far. They're not quite done yet. This is lap number 12. And there's Etta Ray Squeegee still trying to catch him in second. Meanwhile, adrenaline racing in a surprise number three spot, holding third on the field. You know, they're running that boat very loose to keep up as much speed, but that boat is carrying so well. These guys have just moved up into fifth place now that Pier 57 has dropped out. We're going to do the best we can. You know, we want to, we want to win. We want to do good, but we don't want to break, like you said. We have a great team with Donzi. They, they really take care of the boat. They, you know, uh, it, well, our season speaks for itself. So we're just going to go out there and do what we do. Well, I know they've got to be disappointed when they heard that they missed that turn when they picked up after the accident. They are still trying to unlap. If they can, who knows? Right now, though, I think they're going to have trouble because Spider-Man is running perfectly. There you see the summary of the field for the Super Vs as we get near the end of this race. Will the Spider-Man hold on? We're going to find out when we come back. Stay with us. A great crowd assembled in St. Petersburg, Florida for the 2003 GMC Pro Grade Series APBA Offshore National Championships. Round number seven, as they say, Dick Crippen along with Martin Sanborn. Uh, we've had a lot to talk about with this boat. Spider-Man, leader from the beginning. These guys, they had a little bit of a battle at the start, but they are now way out in front of the Ettore boat you see in the background on the Super V light. The Hendrick Motorsports now is out. They spun out during the break while we were away from it. You can see they're checking out Ben Hendrick. He's a little bit shook up, but they got a rescue team that gets right out there to these guys. We don't take any chances. We've got divers on the helicopters as well as on rescue boats. Here is your leader coming down for the checkered flag. This is a local boat out of Newport Ritchie, Florida in the extended greater Tampa Bay area. Steve Michelos and Gary DeSusis, great job. They have gone undefeated through the national championships this year. That gives them that number one going into next year. Here we're looking at the finish in Factory 2. Let's play racing. These guys led from start to finish today. Patrick Dunn and Jeff Cresciano. What a wonderful job they've done. The Porter family and uh, Formula Power Boats have got to be thrilled with how well this boat ran here at the national championships. And it looks like A.R. Donzi is going to take second place. They've been in a battle with Harwich Concrete all the way through this race. And it has been a little bit nip and tuck through the turns. Snap on talking tools. The points leader coming in of the race takes a fourth place and the national championships and here we're back to our winners in factory two let's play racing these guys ran flawlessly as he humbly accepts his victory let's play racing takes first place in st petersburg i'll tell you what a checkered flag has you doing strange things a super v winner the spider-man team of todd welling on the steering wheel 
Lance Hendrickson on the throttles. This is an experienced team, and they showed every ounce of experience today. Coming in for the checkered flag, second place will be Etta Ray Squeegees, the team of James C. Richardson and Dennis Segalas, again, experienced. And this, if there's a surprise in the field, it's got to be adrenaline racing. They did great in this boat, and they proved the boat can run and compete. Team Spider-Man comes across, taking the checkered flag. These guys wanted to win here badly. Now we're going to have to see how the points all shake out, because with the accident with Donzi, this whole thing goes totally up in the air for who the national champion is going to be for 2003. Let's go down to the pits. Lance, you guys weren't going to hold anything back today. Obviously, you didn't. Right out there in front from the get-go, and you never look back. So awesome. I'm telling you, Skater knows how to make a boat. That thing rocked. That thing just hooked up and ran like the wind. It was awesome. We went out and ran it. This is what shows you. Equal weights. Boats are equal. Let's go run. Well, now, you know, Donzi missed a turn. It's all up in the air here. There's some, there's some calculations that have to happen. Oh, I heard they missed a turn. They hit a pace boat, knocked people out of the pace boat. What is going on over there? Well, we're all still elated. We, you know, it should be the championship. Uh, it's unfortunate what happened with the pace boat. And uh, we need to find those guys and talk to them, let them know it was definitely not intentional. We did the best we could to stay out of harm's way and observe the yellow flag. We just had nowhere to go. And um, hopefully they're OK. It felt really good. We jumped out. We had a great start today, and uh, the boat really worked well. Our hang propellers running awesome. I mean, uh, I think we picked the right setup for the day, and the big help was we had a good start, you know. Well, here's some more humble winners, if you will, and they deserve everything they got. The Cirrus Let's Play Racing team, they took the win in Factory 2, followed by Audacity Racing, Harwich Concrete Block, and back in fourth place, Snap-on Talking Tools. We did a lot of work at Lake Yes. Got to thank those guys. Got to thank Formula, all our other sponsors. And we're real happy to be here right now. Brian, you've got to be just thrilled to death. I mean, you guys have come such a long way watching how the boat has progressed and how you guys have progressed as a team. And now you got the 2 1 on the side of your boat. Yeah, we're, we're thrilled. You know, we've done all of this ourselves. We're a really small team. There's just three of us. And, and we do this as, as our way to relax. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're really, really thrilled. We put the boat together ourselves. It's run fantastic all year. And, and the racing today was just uh, fantastic. Some of the most exciting racing turns that we've had in our four years, uh, racing head to head with some of these guys, it was a great day. We had a great season. We, we ran all the national events. We ran them all well. And uh, the boat stayed together every time. We finished every race we started. And as you know, Martin, in offshore, that's not that common. Little question as to the win in Super B Light. It went to the Extreme Vortec team of Steve Michelos and Gary DeSusis. They are happy, undefeated the entire season. I don't think since the days of Leif Farron have we had an undefeated season on the National Pro Series, but these guys did it, Vortec Extreme. And on top of that, the maintenance on this engine, I think, consisted of a couple of oil changes. A couple of oil changes, two oil changes, two gas filters. We wanted to see if we could be done. Totally, no breakdowns, no failures, all the testing and everything. It was unbelievable. Um, we've never had a season like this before, but it, it really was the ultimate test. What a phenomenal year. We're obviously proud of all the racers out there on the circuit, but these two guys put a package together, put a team together, put a boat together, and had some power that kept them going, and look what they accomplished. Just an absolutely phenomenal season. Let's put a wrap on day one of our race in St. Petersburg, Florida, the APBA National Championships, part of the GMC Pro Grade Series Championship Tour. This is Dick Crippen on behalf of Martin Sanborn. So long, everyone. We'll see you next time.